and well met, citizens of Westeros. Uh, Steve Butts here was myself, Samuel Claiborne. That's right. Yeah, I think of myself more as a subject than a citizen. Honestly. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I it's, guess you don't have any representation. It's in the, not in this, so easy for the little this guys in this um, world. This is the brand new Game of Thrones trailer. It's the second full length trailer for season five that we've seen. Uh, this one has much more in it. And uh, we're going to talk about a lot of spoilers. We're going to talk about a lot of things that are different from the books. We're going to identify some things that we have questions about, which we'd really like to hear your feedback on. Yeah, they're really uh, they're making quite a few changes, it looks like. People the, are in weird places. It's yep. strange now. And it, indicative of that is this very first image of Jamie in a very Dornish-looking place. Yeah, so that's one of the first changes, uh, and you you really they really pay off on this a little bit later when you actually see Jamie right. in Dorne. There's no mistaking it. But yeah. yeah, that's that looks to be where he is right now. Jamie has gone to Dorne mm -hmm. uh, in place of some of the other characters who were sent down there to rescue uh, or to look after Marcella, the princess, yes, uh, who had been sent down there uh, previously. And you can see one of the Dornish spears right there. You know they love their spears in Dorne, but we'll get back to that for sure. Um, so the, the opening sequence flashes through a lot of the locations that take in, in, in this next uh, series, and uh, this is uh, one at Castle Black with uh, Stannis and the Red Lady, the Red Priestess, um, st starting a series of pyres to burn people. Yeah, and we should mention also we're, we're sort of going through this uh, via stills right now, but this is voiced over by um, Danny, yes. who's basically naming all the uh, all the contenders for the throne. So she's going through mm -hmm. Baratheon. Uh, now she's focusing on Stark. This is Sansa. You see there in the background that little pennant that's waving. That's got the sigil of uh, of House Aaron on yes, the, the, the hawk. The moon and the uh, the, the falcon. Mm -hmm. um, she is traveling through a very uh, identifiable area. Mm -hmm. If you've watched the show a lot, this is the kind of the, the either the veil or between the veil and Winterfell. This is kind of looks like the area where they shot um, uh, 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 Ned Stark. Um, chopping the guy's head off in the, mm -hmm. in the very first scene of Game of Thrones. Um, we're going to see a little bit later that, uh, well, and first of all, this is a surprise that Sansa's on the move because she, last we saw her in the books, she is at uh, the Eyrie still. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, she's that was moving true in somewhere. Yeah. And we think she might be moving towards Winterfell, which is beyond the books. There's no disputing that. We're going to get to a scene in a few minutes that absolutely just places her there 100%. But yeah, Crazy. that's a huge Crazy. deviation from the books. Yep. Uh, and then next up, we've got um, her sister Arya, who's got the coin now that was given to her uh, as, as sort of passage yeah, to the Valor three Morgulis. cities. Uh, she's kind of cashed that in, uh, and she may actually be in the East now at this point in uh, in this scene here. And what's interesting is in books four and five of, of the series, um, she's not in those a lot. Uh, so I imagine her role might be expanded a little bit. Uh, yeah, in, she's in just running around and murdering five. people. Yeah, she's exactly. So we'll see where that gets to in this season. And then we um, have uh, Marjorie Terrell, uh, fresh from, uh, I guess, becoming a widow uh, after the uh, the red wedding, or the purple wedding, rather. Yeah, and that's Tommen's uh, kind of kingly frock there. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they get married this season, and uh, he takes the place of Joffrey. He's, he's, he's a good guy, though. He's not as bad. He's kind of, you know, maybe aloof, but... Yeah, but some people in the book have looked to sort of his kindness and, and sort of overall nice guy kind of attitude mm -hmm. as being a liability for him in the role that he's in. Oh, for sure. Um. So there's a lot of uh, scenes of, of fighting in Marine mm -hmm. in that we, we're going to be seeing in this trailer. And in that, uh, a lot of people are wearing these gold masks. I believe those are the Sons of the Harpy? Yeah, so uh, Danny sort of took over in Marine. It's one of the cities of the East, and the cities of the East are famous, obviously, for slaving. Uh, here's a picture of Grey Worm, who is mm -hmm. a slave that um, Danny freed, and he's sort of become... Kind of the new Jorah, kind of like her new totally. enforcer, her new right-hand yeah. guy, as far as the, the military side of her rule goes. And, um, yeah, the Sons of the Harpy, these guys in the gold mask, are uh, just militantly resistant to Danny's rule, mm -hmm. and they begin assassinating people in the streets, and there's this huge conflict in the East uh, as she kind of confronts them. Uh, and we'll see a few more developments uh, and, of and that story. And they really line. want uh, – everybody in the city uh, advises Danny that if she opens up these fighting pits again right. – Stuff like this is going to calm down because they're going to be distracted by violence, like the Roman Coliseum kind of. Like, yeah, know, exactly. And bring the violence to the city, and the people will stop being violent. And there's a, a there's a suitor uh, who's sort of after her to get married, and he's bought up all the pits at yeah. sort of a cheap rate now that they're closed, and he yeah. wants them open too so that he can rake in the cash. Mm -hmm. uh, now, where is this? Am I, we're not 100 percent sure. This might be I'm White not, Harbor. I'll, or? I'll be fu yeah. I'll fully admit it's a it's a white looking harbor. It could be White <laughs> Harbor, and um, and uh, we know that. Uh, um, Sir Davos travels here. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that's where this is. I mean, you can see the beach. It's on the ocean. It doesn't look like a river, really. Uh, it, it, it's a neat-looking place. And, you, and we get also this shot of the city itself briefly. But there's no... 
kind of set up uh, characters portrayed here. So it's just kind of a new location for me, and I, I think it looks really neat. And we cut right from this, though, in, in the trailer to uh, Tyrion mm-hmm. and Varys. Yeah, and so I don't know could, if this the, could be Essence. I don't so know if they're in the be. same location as we just saw, right. but it could be that Varys is taking Tyrion to White Harbor so that he can escape to the east. Yeah. You know, because uh, Tyrion's kind of on the run at the end of season four. Um, and I don't know that Varys or, goes... Or should we call him YOLO? YOLO, yeah. He goes by a couple of uh, pseudonyms. One of them, hilariously, is YOLO. Yeah. Uh, George and, and, Martin probably not too up on the social media. No, no. And uh, Varys uh, is not supposed to be with him, uh, I right. think, by this point. Um how much do you think that hand costs? Jeez, that hand's that's, that hand's probably uh probably five copper pieces, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that snake looks like he's pretty interested in it. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, this is uh this is Marjorie wedding Tommen, mm-hmm. right? It, I, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, it's a flashback to her marrying Joffrey, right? Which is just a testament to sort of the sameness mm-hmm. of some of these actors, which is uh, obviously a plot element in the book yeah. as well that a lot of these guys look the same. Now you, you'll notice the Septon here. Mm-hmm. Looks uh, very different from the Septon that we're going to see later. He is not as pious, and he he happens to be alive at this point. <laughs> right, um, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be getting to that. So um, there's Cersei s- s- still feeling, I guess, sort of eclipsed by Marjorie's ascendance. Well, you know, she becomes obsessed with Marjorie and uh, House Tyrell uh, taking over you know the power from the Lannisters in in this in, in in this season and then in these books and she becomes so obsessed with it that she makes some serious mistakes and uh, in trying to kind of besmirch uh, Marjorie. So we, we even see some scenes of that in this trailer. You basically don't need to watch the season after this. Trailer. Now these guys, these I think probably one of my favorite parts of this new trailer yeah. is seeing these guys. These are the sparrows. Now mm-hmm. uh, at some point, uh, without giving too much away, um, a group of common people. Uh, show up and they basically say look like the way the whole religious institution has been running is is corrupt we want to take it over and it's uh they're called sparrows because the sparrow i think is the most common of all birds and so it's sort of an aspect of humility that they're trying to portray with that name yeah uh, but they're also really big on temperance they're really big on um uh you know smashing down Hi- conspicuous consumption yes. so, <laughs> so we're gonna see that um you know what's interesting is that th- there was an uprising um in uh westeros uh hundreds of years prior to this in which uh, this same type of movement took up swords and uh, battled against uh, the Targaryen rulers. So there's there's a lot of tension there. Um, here, you, I just wanted to point out too, like when you ever use, we were a little confused about who these guys were. So in this show, they identify them. They have red dots on their foreheads mm-hmm. and they wear these black cloaks. So we're going to see them a lot later in some scenes that are not in the books. And here they are, just kind of wrecking like a like a brewery. Yeah, or they're they're something. they're spreading temperance, holy temperance. Um, there's a couple scenes of Daenerys uh, maybe overseeing the fighting pit, and, I, and this could be one of them, or because she be, she could be just uh, interacting with the subjects. You can see the Targaryen banner over there, which I always like the red the red dragon banner. But uh, it, there's a really cool scene coming up with her in it. So this is more uh, just chaos and turmoil in Marine. Yeah, th- there's a lot of uh, scenes of suppression of not only. Um, the, the Sons of the Harpy, but it seems like there's uh, aggression between slaves and slave owners, as we've seen several times in other cities, right? Like in Yunkai. I love this. So, yeah, what do we have here? We've got, at the front of the boat, we've got Jon Snow. Yep. Behind him is Tormund. Yep, Tormund, Giant Spain. I don't know if this guy uh, in the back is meant to be uh, <laughs> Stannis, but like... It, I don't think so. Uh, that could be Mance Raider next yeah. to Tormund. I'm not sure about that. Um, so, there's no point for Jon to be on a boat in the books where we're at. But th- we do know that there are refugees way up north, mm-hmm. and they're on the coast, and they're they're kind of uh, in caves and in the forest on the coast. And and a big point of contention between John and the people on the wall is that he wants to, he wants to save them because of course he lets in all the wildlings, and he's, right. he's excited about that. There's some scenes in this trailer which indicate that he actually goes up and interacts with them, which is strange because yeah. at the end of A Dance with Dragons, it doesn't seem like he's going to be able to do that. Yeah. Really interested to see where this is going. It's so hard to talk about this spoiler-free. I know. Well, I like how we're saving <laughs> right. some spoilers and then right. just trampling over others. <laughs> right. uh, there's a closer shot with John. He's got the, go. the sword. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry, the pommel of his uh, sword from uh, the Mormont family, which has been changed from a bear to a wolf. Um, yeah. So look, see this kind of icy cave kind of look up there and everything. It looks like it looks like the place where the wildlings are holed up. And yeah. maybe, and I can't tell if this is the same boat, but I think Jon Snow and and Tormund are on this boat and. I think it is. I mean, you see the bald guy there in the back, and yeah, yeah I agree. This what a definitely, great set. This definitely looks north of the wall to me. It was so it's so cool looking and like ominous and creepy. Mm-hmm. Dead things in the water. Mm-hmm. That's what they say at the end of that book. 
uh, here's Yolo once again. So yeah, if you've seen, if you've read the books, is sort of, in my opinion, these sort of interminable sequences of, of Tyrion on a boat. So seeing him on a boat, it's like Huckleberry little, Finn. It got me a little Essos. scared, but um, I, I imagine they'll truncate quite a bit of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and I don't know up, if this is the bigger boat he's on. I don't know if this is just when he's getting there. Right. Uh, he looks up, and, and the cut here is um, yep. is to a dragon. Pro- may, may not be part of the same scene. Yet, one of the posters shows a dragon in the fogs and Tyrion looking at it. Yeah. Just like this. Now, there's also some sequences on the river in which there could be um, imagined things happening. Sure. But. Well, for me, I, I, I took that poster as being sort of thematic. Like, he's sure. going to sort of find the mother of dragons, and mm-hmm. so that's... Uh, sort of you know kind of the, the way they the way i understood that image uh but the dragon in the sky uh that's drogon maybe Cause yeah drogon, so Drogon's one the one who dragon gets out. wasn't locked up yeah that's gonna be a, a big part of this season now i wonder if we could zoom in enhance on Tyrion's <laughs> eyes and see the see the dragon right, right. twin peaks style oh this one is this uh, this is kind uh, of mind-blowing for me kind I, of mystery kind of a kind of a big deal though yeah, uh, this is um, uh, the Bastard of Bolton, uh, who is now uh, possibly a Snow. Yeah. Because Ramsay gets his name. Uh, with, uh, what's her name? Her name is Miranda. She was his Miranda. hunting companion. Mm-hmm. She's the guy who kind of helped him screw around with. Not Theon a character a in the bit. books. So not I'm not familiar with this character so much, except in the show. But one of the things they've kind of wanted is to legitimize uh, Snow's mm-hmm. uh, claim. Now is to get him married off to someone Arya legitimate, Stark. and yeah. Arya Stark happens to be missing. Great, let's just pretend we find a new Arya. In the books, that's uh, Jane Poole, mm-hmm. Sansa's friend from King's Landing. Who was never really a character in the show, so it would make sense yeah. if they just swapped her out. And she kind of looks a little bit like the actress who plays Arya. Like, yeah. you know, I could see, uh, you know, back in the day before there was social media and there were pictures all Nobody over Facebook. Nobody knows what people look like, right? He'd be, be totally fine saying this and is Arya Stark. And that's what they do. They just throw off. a bunch of wolf pelts on anybody. <laughs> right, they're like, this exactly. is Arya Stark. And, and everybody's so scared of the Boltons, it would yeah. be hard to, to, you know, challenge it. But of course, if someone like you know, Bran or Jamie sees this person, they're going to know instantly. That it's Absolutely. Not it's so it's this next one. This one got What me. is going on here? So this is Sansa Stark, quite yep. clearly. Uh, and I think, uh, and I think it's indisputable, she's yeah. in the crypts beneath Winterfell. Yep, We've she's... seen them before when Ed went down there, when, um, you know, several of the other characters have taken refuge down there. And we saw her on the move a little bit, and here she is in Winterfell. I have no idea what's happening here, except for that. Yeah, Sansa, again... There are events that are going on in Winterfell. Winter has come. Uh, it's about to be besieged by Stannis, though he's a little bit held up on the way. Um, but she's not there. She's not there. But Theon's he, there. Here's what's happened most recently. Like, like Winterfell gets burned. The people get put to the sword. Mm-hmm. And at one point, Littlefinger says to her, you know, you've got to avenge them. But I can absolutely see her going there, and she's maybe now paying her respects to her brothers, who she believes is dead, uh, or dead, you know, to her mother and to her father. Um, yeah. And I have no idea what role she plays after that. Uh, there's another scene later on where and, it looks like. And does that mean Littlefinger is here too? I have no idea. See, there's so this, many characters in different yeah, places. It's in a this. lot to, to to shift around and, and uh, change if that's the case. Because we, I mean, there has to be a conservation of characters, though, right? Because in books four right. and five, it expands even more, and right. that's really hard to, to deal with for uh, the viewer. Well, we, I mean, you know, over the last four seasons, you and I and, and plenty of other fans of the books have gotten quite used to this, them sort of collapsing characters into one single role for yeah. the story. Uh, but in season five, we're seeing those characters now in incredibly unexpected places. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Sansa being in Winterfell is just one of them. We'll see a few more coming up later. Uh, the back of some guy's head. I don't know. What this, is. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh this is people fighting in the, uh, I think in the battle pit at, at Marine. That's what it seems to be like looking like to me. It, it's really hard to tell, but it looks like there's people in slave outfits and then people in kind of uh, mercenary outfits. And I wonder if this guy that we're seeing, uh, and this is just speculation on my part, is maybe Ser Jorah. We see him a little bit later as a pit fighter, mm-hmm. and um, you know maybe he's working his way up to actually perform in front of Danny when the pits are finally open. And yeah. if you look at the face there, yeah. like that looks like Ser Jorah to me. Yeah, and, th- and this is why my speculation about this being the pits is I- in existence, because... Danny's just watching it all happen, and there's clearly a bunch of rich people watching it too, and they're so happy. <laughs> right, right. And we know, you know, the, the her her richer suitor is kind of uh, aligned with the Sons of the Harpy, and claims that he can quell them as long as she opens up those fighting pits. So that's kind of the plot going on here. Not the most compelling plot, I don't think, for Daenerys, <laughs> but at least her dragon uh, escapes. Right. And senses senses something going on here, and here's here's some shots of that. You know what's really nice about this? The dragon's eyes were glowing before he breathes fire in the oh. scene. I thought that I was really cool. that. I know it's a hard to see a shot, but right after this, there's a burst of flame, and then well, there's there's a famous, other places on fire. There's a famous fire breathing scene in yeah. uh, in the books. Uh, 
you know, and there's there's a character that we haven't really seen in the trailers, don't really know about in the story. So I wonder if maybe they're going to uh, collapse that role into somebody else. Right. Like, you know, somebody else could be sort of present as that dragon escapes. Yeah. Um, I can't tell what's on fire here, Steve, but I do see mm-hmm. now that one person kind of looks like uh, 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 Bolton here. But then the other one looks like Sir Davos. I don't really know where this is. Yeah, the guy in the back does look a little bit like the Onion Knight to me. And my guess would be, you know, with Stannis moving to the north, um, he's got to send Davos around just to kind of get some business done. And Davos could very easily be meeting with Bolton near Winterfell. And then yeah. who knows what happens at this point. The the Ironborn could show up. Uh, kind of all bets are off the as Davos far as where people supplied are. in White Harbor uh, at the end of Book 5 is one of my favorite things that's happened. I really want to see what happens with that. Yep. Uh, Melisandre um, looking ominous. But she's holding a lamp, which I thought was kind of neat. Uh, you don't see lamps much in the series, uh, but they are plotting to march to Winterfell here, which I think is a, a neat little. Or they may be in the north now and looking to repel the Ironborn. You see the ships there, kind of coming in to where all those armies are standing. Yeah, you the know, ships. Yeah. It could be that he's sort of uh, trying to hold off Theon's. Well, people. And he's in a tent, right? So, I, so that says to me that they're on the move. And that you can see the out the shadow of snow, snow on top of the tent. Exactly, yeah. and they get snowed in on the way to Winterfell. So that's that's a really interesting. Uh, idea and this is really where the books leave off so we'll see what happens all right and they don't have any candles lit right so now you see these uh there's this the shield that you see there in the bottom left that shield has the sigil of oh, yeah, yeah. john Aaron. Yeah. oh there we go much mm-hmm. better shot so yeah this could be sansa with sort of a guard going to winterfell uh, we've we've seen this little uh figure on top of the doorway there in the distance maybe it's a wolf we don't know it's it's kind of hard to make out but yeah it does look, it does look wolf-like but um, yeah sansa could be bringing some of john Aaron's folks to winterfell you know, if they bought some of those hands from that market in essos they could hang them on those hooks <laughs> it's really good hand hooks I just yeah. want to point that out so they, they show up they're like where are your Probably hands? a good deal too frankly <laughs> right you know. Um, so there's a lot of scenes of wildlings at the wall attacking what appear to be other wildlings, but they could also be um, scary, you know, white walkers. So we'll get to that. But yeah, they are holding back people, and this doesn't look like um, Castle Black necessarily to me. But uh, you can also see one of the Thens here with the tattoos in the back of his bald head, and uh, we haven't seen the Magnar of Thin uh, join forces with John yet, but that's a big part of, of this this uh, upcoming season. Right. We see also there's uh, Brienne and Podrick kind of behind her, shivering in the cold. Yeah. Uh, she's not up. supposed to be this far north, though, as No, far as unless, know. yeah, so she goes all the way up to Crackclaw Point in search of uh, of the Hound and Sansa, or, and, and Arya, mm-hmm. And uh, she just, you know, it doesn't it doesn't end up being that remarkable of a find for her. But she she, she tracks some people, and I wonder if this is Crackclaw Point and they're that far north. Well, maybe I would also say, um, you know, if if she's going up north, and if Sansa is now on the move, you know, Brienne and Pod spend some time in the Vale. Yeah, It'd be very easy for them to meet up, and she escorts Sansa to Winterfell, and then heads north for some other purpose. Who knows? Uh, but I would also point I mean, out she you... saw Arya in in the TV show, but she didn't in the books. So. Yeah, that's right. She's Very also strange. she's holding a Oathkeeper there. That's the sword given to her by Jamie Lannister, yep. who was famously known as sort of a betrayer, like this sort of guy with no honor. Yeah. Um, and he gives her his family sword, basically, and says, yeah. I want you to now fulfill uh, this promise so yep. that people will know that I'm not just such a heel. And she just happens upon Podrick, who is a, a Tyrion squire, mm-hmm. but has fled. Because um, Tyrion's now accused of murder, exactly. and it's not a great time for him. Yeah. Uh, here's Tormund Giantsbane. Yep. Uh, and the Such wildlings look. looking f- uh, scared of things, but I can't tell if they're looking at these guys or if these guys are uh, aligning with them because there's things coming for them. Now, are these, you know, dead things with black hands? Because they don't have weapons. What are they doing? There's some very aggressive scene here. And then you have this scene of yeah. clearly a dead thing coming through. That's a white punching through presumably that gate that yeah. they were all standing in front yeah. of a little while ago. So this sequence is almost deliberately misleading people into who's fighting who, I think. But they're actually going to shake this up and make this a little bit different, I think. But yeah, the, the, obviously winter is coming and with it, uh, lots of dangerous A bunch of scary death guys. Yeah. Do you think this is Melisandre's blood? I don't even have a point of speculation here because I don't remember what this could be from. I have and zero I point of reference on this except yeah. for that Melisandre has that sort of witchcraft kind of vibe. And yeah, that's what that was my yeah, assumption Yeah, the leech well. blood from kings, of course, can be burned to create actual magic effects. And right. we saw that happen. All right. This is the harpy being toppled from a, a top. Uh, Beautiful scene here. What a, the, what a great set. Yeah, the uh, giant ziggurat uh, and marine. A uh, CG set here. It's just really cool. Yeah. Um, and look, they really set up for it. There's like these wooden platforms they set up just so they could knock over the harpy. Now, the harpy is the symbol of slavery in, in Marine. And um, they, yeah, it's 
it's really neat to see this happen. Again, Arya is not on a ship, mm -hmm. so maybe she is at her destination and uh, learning the ways of assassinating people and changing faces. Yeah, and I will say, uh, you know, we, we see a character a little bit later that we don't know, uh, but one of the things that Arya learns in her time in the East is um, how to maybe not look like herself mm -hmm. so much. So I'm speculating that maybe she might be in other places in this trailer and we just don't recognize her. Totally, yeah. Uh, so this is Jonathan Price as the new High Septon. So we, we alluded to the Sparrows earlier, the guys who were busting up mm -hmm. the barrels. They put this guy in charge mm -hmm. uh, who... He's not dressed like the previous I said. No, he's in pious robes. Rags. And yeah, he's, he's very big on – he cleans the floor a lot, I think, if I remember correctly. He's always scrubbing the floor. Um, he uh, flagellates himself, you know, like he beats himself with whips and things like that. So he's a very kind of uh, interesting character. Mm -hmm. uh, but he takes over and uh, immediately – gets into confrontations with sort of the ruling political elite yeah. uh, led by Cersei and some of the other folks and because he's they're kind out of, of step. There's, there's so much unrest in the countryside that there's almost an insurgent force of uh, religious warriors mm. uh, coming together. And he's really taking advantage of that and leading them. Well, and he actually gets Cersei to uh, allow him to reinstitute this ancient military order that would allow the faithful to bear arms. Uh, because certain look, Cersei's you know yeah, she's like, in a rough place. She needs his like help. Holy and, swords or something that yeah. There's there's two factions. Um, but here we see Tommen with the Kingsguard marching up to the High Sept, yeah. and uh, these are some of the sparrows there, and they immediately like close things off. Uh, maybe he's going to see Cersei. Maybe he's yeah. there for some other purpose. And they all have these mallets that they were using to smash the um, the barrels early, and then they're smashing some other stuff in later scenes. You can also see some of the. Uh, the kind of poor people that are suffering in right. King's Landing, and and part of the Sparrows, uh, you know, thing is like these people aren't being taken care of, so they're able to recruit them really easily yeah. by offering them, uh, you know, kind of purpose and and uh, you know the aloofness of the throne. They're they're kind of playing off of that. I love the white cloaks in this picture. It's, it's a really neat scene. Not in the books either. Right. Tom would never be confronted. In books. Uh, there they are in the sept. You see the bottom of the seven pointed star there, and mm -hmm. this is the High Cer Sparrow and Cersei. Cersei, you know, wants to play these played these people and she has the other Septon murdered and this guy takes over but of course that doesn't work out for her very well here's them smashing what, what do you think you thought this might be a game I, I think like it's some kind of idol I mean of course thing smashing idols is right. like a you know has religious significance it could like when I first started I thought it was a chess set but maybe it's some traveler from the east like yeah. selling his you know tokens mm -hmm. or his votives or whatever yeah uh, and they of course are just uh very unforgiving mm -hmm. in terms of their uh, lack of acceptance of other religions. Yeah, I'm seeing now that it's not just a dot on their, their foreheads. There's some kind of sigil there, and I don't know what it is. I'm interested in seeing what that's about. I, I'm actually surprised they're playing up this plot a lot in this season. It's kind of the chapters that I would skim over a little bit <laughs> until I went right. back and read it. And I, I, they, they can make it more interesting in this show. So so here we see. Oh yeah, here we see. We've got Cersei. We've got Tom, and I'm guessing that's... Uh, um, Marjorie behind him, and then uh, Lady Elena is next to her. Yeah. And there's the High Septon, the, the High Sparrow. And this figure that's racing towards them, I, I think there's a better shot of his face coming up. Yeah, but I, I don't have it. I'm sorry. Uh, well, it looks like um, it looks like Sir Loras. Yeah. Um, and he's being thrown to the ground. Yeah, something's going on where he's racing at the High Septon, and he's sort of being held back. And um, in the book, of course, you know, uh, Cerse Cersei uses the Kettle Blacks uh, as sort of a... a a way of getting at Marjorie. Uh, she starts to spread rumors she, she about them. She wants to, yeah, besmirch her name yeah. by getting one of the Kettle Blacks to, to you know, physically assault her, basically. Um, and, but of course, Cersei's doing that by sleeping with. Well, he also, with she, also she also wants the Kettle Blacks to spread lies about what Marjorie's doing behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And given that there's uh, sort of already been the seed planted that Marjorie and Loras maybe don't have the appropriate relationship. Um, maybe there's some sort of accusation involved in what's happening here, and Sir Loras gets angry at that yeah. and uh, and lashes out at the high seven. And the books, Loras has been sent to Dragonstone. He gets wounded. There's a whole different plot, but we just don't know what's going on with him. And he's wearing right. this character's wearing a pretty frilly frock thing. So right. We talked about this a lot, and again, this is speculation, but I just can't tell what's going on there. I think this is back to the uh, fighting pits here. There's yeah. just a big guy killing another guy. And these trees are kind of in the background of where Daenerys is watching. Right. So I think it's all shot in the same place. Uh, here's the civil unrest I was talking about earlier. This is just a, a slave, a clearly dressed slave with like, uh, you know, rags and locks on their necks, just slapping some of the <laughs> more elite people. That's what you get, elites. But then, she, then Daenerys is running from something here, too, some kind of threat. And this is all not what happens in the book. So I don't know what that threat is. But then uh, we have this whole scene where I've tried to piece it together, and it's basically, it looks like the Sons of the Harpy infiltrate the Coliseum. 
and they get in here and somehow um that's a whole different scene there. And we're, we're going to see that Daenerys gets involved too. This is the guy that replaced uh, Daenerys's paramour. Yeah, this, so this is, is a reminder for people. This, this is, is Dario. Uh, and uh, he's a different different actor from last you know, last season it was this actor, but before that it was a different guy. I, I, I like this new guy a lot more. His uh, name is uh, Mikael uh, Huisman, I think it's how you pronounce it. But um, yeah, he's great as Dario. And he's sort of Danny's love interest, who obviously would have a lot to say about this other suitor who's bought up all the pits and wants her to marry him yep. and kind of reopen, the, reopen things. Yep. So there's a few scant scenes of uh, Dornish people, mm-hmm. and this is one of them. There's a woman attacking a man with a spear. I don't know if they're just practicing or what. I cannot tell what's going on, but this is just a beautiful shot of what Dorn is going to look like. Yeah. I mean, you see all this inlay. We saw where Jamie was in the very first scene, right? There's all these, uh, you know, kind of uh, almost like Turkish-looking uh, columns and palisades, and then there's the there's the uh, neat mosaics everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And palm trees. Love it. Lots Dornish of oranges too. Lots of blood mm-hmm. oranges. Uh, more Sons of the Harpy here. Yeah, again, with these great masks. I love the mask. It looks uh, almost Chinese. Yeah, it's very terrifying. It's so this is what I was saying. They really, like, they're running into the pit at some point, and it uh, looks like unexpectedly. And you notice, like, a lot of people in the stands, like, they look dead. Yeah. Like, something's gone on. Yeah. Um, we're not quite sure what that is. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that has something to do with uh, Danny's dragons, or maybe it's something to do with the general unrest between the ex-slaves and the former owners. Uh, we're not really sure. Mm-hmm. And there's, well, whatever the case, uh, this is a nice-looking scene, but how did Daenerys even get in this situation? Yeah, so she, there's Danny. <laughs> she's got Masandi with her. I'm guessing that guy just to her back that could be Sir Jorah. Yeah, I, I think know. it's Sir Jorah. We see him. Well, who, uh, who would be returning kind of surprised, uh, surprisingly, I think. Yeah, and he, I mean, we saw him earlier as a pit fighter, and uh, it would it would totally make sense for him to be back here. Uh, I don't see Sir Barristan in this shot, uh, which is interesting, because obviously he would be there. Uh, for a situation like this where the queen needed to be protected. Yeah. Yeah, there's Dario with his hooked sword right to the right. And Grey Worm, I think, is that figure at the very top of that Mm -hmm. group. So we'll see. Yeah, not a good situation to be in. Uh, Are you here the Sand Snakes? Yeah. There's this little scorpion. There's a bucket. I don't know which actress plays which, but you you know one of them. Well, yeah, so that's Indira Varma on the far right there. She plays Ilaria, who was... um, uh, Prince Oberyn's paramour mm-hmm. before things went horrible for him, and she's presumably still a little cheesed off about how all that went down in King's Landing. Who's that? I don't know. Is it, is it Varys? It's I hate to say any bald guy that I whose face I can't yeah. see is Varys, but yeah, but somebody's ba- this person's alive and yeah. they're in the sand and and clearly beset upon by. And I would say Daddy's no, working. absolutely not for Viserys, but like or Varys, but we also see like Sansa's in Winterfell now Jamie's in Dorne yeah. like who knows who knows who's, the, who's there but you'll also just notice that uh, in a couple other scenes we got coming up this kind of sand dune look mm-hmm. is where uh, we see Jamie and some other people yep. here he is oh here he is as, as a matter of fact fighting with his left hand and actually kind of holding his own it looks like yep yeah against again uh, another uh, person that's dressed in these Dornish kind of um, um, I don't even know how to describe that cloak and that's not a cloak it's, it's like a tunic kind of yeah, yeah but we see also uh, there's a uh, Another scene where um, Bronn yeah. is also there fighting yeah. these same the guys same in the fight same location, it looks like, which is kind of interesting. There's Danny with uh, the new actor who's playing Dario. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought this was interesting. I, I don't know what's going on. Brienne is uh, cutting a, a tree in half, which is not easy to do. No, well, not Display not for you, strength. but for her, it's probably but it, not, it, she's no big not deal. quite up to the to the uh, wintry area where she, we saw her. But you know, her path uh, in this season takes her far north, uh, just looking for the Stark girls. So, mm-hmm. should be interesting. Who's this? I don't know. Yeah, we, this is this is the scene we're having trouble with, and I can't wait for to hear what people have to say about this because somebody will know. But this is a person with darker hair. The uh, the, the time the, w- when this is happening, uh, I believe Daenerys is talking about, or Cersei is talking about um, being a queen. Mm-hmm. But this is you know so reminiscent of what Daenerys looked like when everybody reached out to her in the very end of uh, season two, mm-hmm. and. Um, yeah, I just I, I don't know what's going on here at all. But you can see the slave uh, neck neck uh, collars. Like collar, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we know it's Essos. There's a appears to be some kind of spotted cat or a panda bear in a cage over there. But I don't know what's going on here. I mean, this I, look I, again. It's just speculation. But like this could be Arya. I, I don't know. But if she's, it's not she's her, in I don't a free know city. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's very very confusing to me. Uh, there's Alaria Sand again, uh, sort of facing down some attackers. Not quite sure what the context of the yeah. scene is, but um, she looks pretty badass there. 
Now, here's Podrick. Uh, so by at some River. point, yeah, Podrick has to be picked, uh, meet up with Brienne, right? Right. This yeah. looks like that scene. Yeah, and I'm not sure who she's, uh, who this other character is. Mm-hmm. It looks like maybe he's trying to attack Podrick. Maybe he's trying to attack Brienne. But, but they cross swords. But over yeah, they his cross head. swords right over his head. It's kind of an awesome climactic uh, sort of moment. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> so and here's the best yeah. I could get of uh, Bronn uh, actually battling in that scene with right. Jamie. So Bronn and Jamie are going to Dorne together because they're best buddies now and they spar together. Yeah, and it's interesting because Bronn and Jamie are the two folks in the entire world uh, who actually probably still, you know, care about Tyrion. Yeah. And so for them to be together, like, well, maybe there's some angle that they're trying to play for him yep. uh, down there. And Bronn's path is very different in, in the books. He actually gets a, a keep. And goes off and marries somebody and kind of retires, and we don't know really what, mm-hmm. what he's up to. And um, and Jamie is in a very different place. Uh, yeah, there's just kind of uh, Grey Worm and um, Dario, and Dario uh, working together to probably look for clues about the harpies. Yeah, that's 100% my guess. Now this is... What the heck? Like, Masande... Yeah. It's uh, like some fan fiction. <laughs> Danny's, uh, Danny's kind of handmaiden slash, like, C-3PO interpreter type character... And uh, Grey Worm are actually having kind of a little romantic moment, despite his... Uh... What Star Wars character is Grey Worm? Han Solo? <laughs> maybe maybe no. he's R2-D2. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, that's a good point. But yeah, so he's, uh, maybe he's Lando. I think maybe Lando. Lando. Yeah, um, yeah but uh, Grey Worm, obviously, uh, famously uh, a member of the Unsullied. These guys are uh, eunuchs, so mm-hmm. not quite sure how far this is going to go, but it's yeah. interesting to see. Yeah, this was developing in the last season, too. It's surprising. It's, it's not that thrilling of a plot for me, but maybe... Yeah. Sure. Maybe it's going to go somewhere interesting. And there we go, Sir Jorah. Yeah, he's, Sir Jorah. He's Mormont a pit fighter here. here. Yep. And um, everybody's alive when he's fighting here. Yeah. So point that out. I mean, this could sort of be the the uh, the scene right before what we saw, where mm-hmm. Danny's kind of uh, surrounded by a bunch of spearmen holding yeah. things off in the uh, in yeah. The pit. You know, Danny's uh, dragon kind of comes in and wreaks havoc in, in one of these pit fights, but um, it, it, in the books, it's described as just like this this kind of the set, he senses battle. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if this, it's going to sense that she's in trouble. You know? maybe, maybe. She's clearly having trouble controlling it. All right, this is Queen Solis. This is uh, King Stannis' wife. Yeah. Uh, Stannis is obviously you know, much more interested in uh, Melisandre. Well, not interested in Melisandre, but interested in what she can do for him. Yeah. Um, and Prob- Solis is- Probably left behind at the wall when Stannis marches south. So yeah. maybe this is... This has something to do with that. She's in uh, like serious distress here, though, yeah. in the scene. I'm not and sure she cares the- about her daughter a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's yeah, it's unclear what's going on here. But uh, she doesn't have a great relationship with Stannis, and she's right. she's fervently into the Red Priestess. Um, so we saw uh, Jon Snow and others on on boats earlier. Uh, this looks like a scene where that's happening now. But but these are this is clearly the Wildlings um, costume that that they're in here. Oh, they yeah. kind of have the, the kind of the snow the snow camo. And uh, it looks like they're going to be very cold if they get that wet in it. I'm kind of surprised that they're charging to the water. It's all about layers, Sam. Mm-hmm. I just like this shot of Daenerys. And good. Because she is looking at this. Then that's uh, that's Drogon, I guess, huh? Yeah. Very, very big. Yeah. Much bigger than uh, probably the other two dragons. I think he grew the fastest. And she wasn't able to get him to be chained. So he's coming around. She can really hope she really hopes she can tame him and, and get him to come back and probably chain him up. But. And they, the two of them kind so of have a, a moment uh, in the books that's fairly significant as well from a standpoint mm-hmm. of the plot. Uh, but here he is just kind of flying off. Yeah. Yeah, and that kind of leaves us where, uh, oh, close to where she is in the end of book five. And, and, and I hope they get there. But um, that is the entire trailer. It's so much. I feel like uh, we've seen the whole season, but <laughs> we haven't. And it looks like such an exciting change of right. uh, pace for uh from the books and uh, i just think it looks really really exciting right now so there was uh, you know a lot of us who were fans of the books when we saw sort of the closing scenes of last season thought wow this is going in a very different direction yeah. um and then there has since been um you know new stories about how the books uh are going to lag behind the tv series now mm-hmm. so it's interesting to see the story develop in new ways uh mm-hmm. for me as a fan of the books and i know for you uh one thing i will say i didn't see that i I still have a lot of questions about it. I want to see. There's no John Bradley as uh, Samuel Tarley. Samuel yeah. Tarley's not in this at all. And he's not, he doesn't play the biggest role in uh, Feast for Crows or Dance with Dragons. 
Um, but he is, I know, one of the fan favorite characters and one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. So I really, uh, I'm really curious to see what he's been up to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if we find out what Samuel Tarley has been up to, we will talk about it right here on IGN. And uh, please subscribe to uh, our YouTube channel. We're going to be doing a lot more of these detailed Game of Thrones breakdowns. That's IGN on YouTube. And, of course, if you go to IGN.com, you can uh, pretty much be guaranteed that we will be talking about Game of Thrones every single day from now until the debut of the season on April 12th. It's what we do. All right. Thanks, everybody. 